Hey everybody, Valen here from Mischief of Mice, here for another episode on Thaumcraft and how to get started. Today we're going to be covering a little bit of the, on the research symbols so that you can better understand what they mean, the dangers of hungry nodes, uh, getting some new clothing, plus we'll be going over a lot of the basic uh, information tab and the uh, Thaumonomicon. And then uh, last, we're going to be doing thaumaturgy and a new wand. So first off, let's go into the research symbols. Over here, I've got some quick notes to help me out here, as well as give you uh, visible options as to what the heck I'm talking about. So to start, get your thaumonomicon, and you look inside, and there are different shapes of these uh, research items. And each one of them can mean some really different things. Uh, let's see, on the basics tab, it's, yeah, there we go, we've got a square, we've got a circle, uh, we've got uh, hexagons, so what do those mean? The circle is free to, it's free to get research. You just click it and you should get it in most cases, uh, and that's pretty much it for that one. The square, which it will then have uh, a requirement. Uh, so to give an example, this one here it says missing research, required research in order to get that you've got to unlock some other items or uh, once you have gotten close enough to do that you might be able to uh, obtain the research by clicking but until then you won't be able to do it until you either make or uh, make the items required or scan them with your thumb excuse me thermometer uh, or uh, you just finish other research first uh, now, the hexagon, which is my favorite type, it's very simple. It's just click to purchase it. Now, by purchase, it means the aspect points or the research points that you've accumulated over time. If you see, it requires six vacuos, three uh, perdicio, and three instrumentum in order to unlock this. So, if I were to go inside to my research table, Let's go to vacuous. I have 15 here. And by going back here, I click on here. I now have unlocked that. I don't have to do any research for it. I just spend the points and I can now look at it. So that's pretty convenient. Now to show you exactly how many I have left, now you can actually look in your thumbonomicon to find this out, but I just found this to be a little easier. You see now I only have nine vacuos left. So if I click on here, go to my basics tab and click on aspects of magic, it also tells me how many of each type I have. So if I go all the way to the end here to vacuos, you see here it says I have nine. Now there are uh, special attributes on some of those that you may see, like the uh, glowing outline. Those ones are forbidden magic and they may have some nasty side effects. So let's give an example here. Uh, even on the basics uh, information tab, if you look, this one here, it's actually kind of pulsating around the outside edge. That is forbidden magic, and it even says in there, from knowledge, mostly harmless. If you go into other ones, it may have some that are a little bit more dangerous, forbidden knowledge, minor. And as you unlock more and more things, you may find some that are extremely dangerous. Now, low levels of this are actually beneficial. You may end up gaining uh, different secrets, as it might appear on the, um, the Thaumonomicon, or uh, your research gets unlocked, or you get some aspect notes or something like that, or uh, aspect point, research points, excuse me. Uh, but then, if you end up getting a whole lot of it, it could end up being detrimental. You'll start seeing uh, figments of your imagination, like uh, monsters that are here on the screen, but you can't do damage to them and they can't hurt you. Uh, you might end up going momentarily uh, with a blindness effect, or you might end up getting very hungry for uh, unsavory things. But um, those can be uh, uh, postponed, I guess, those negative effects. There are ways of uh, canceling them out, even if it's just temporary. Sometimes you actually have to go through those in order to uh, advance in the mod as far as you would like to go. On to the next one, Dangerous Hungry Nodes and Clothing. This is a Hungry Node. As you can see, it destroys the landscape around it, and any creatures that uh, may get too close 
will end up getting sucked in and uh, over time killed, including players and their items. So if you have a mod that actually will save your items, like in a gravestone or something, it may actually end up destroying that gravestone and all the items inside of it as well. So this is a very dangerous, dangerous node. But as you can see here, it says it's a hungry node. And this can be of great use later on, which I will get into in a very future episode, but not right now, as uh, it's just going to be very destructive and dangerous. Something you should watch out for. So in your quest to find nodes to absorb, oh, there it's found a victim there. <laughs> in your quest to find uh, aura nodes to uh, suck the aspects out of with your wand or other needs of that nature, then um, you might want to be careful that uh, you don't get too close to it, because if I were not in creative mode, I would end up getting sucked right into this just like these creatures are and killed. Um, if you have a way of teleporting away or um, running away really fast to uh, pull out of its uh, gravitational pull, then you might be able to escape. Uh, just having flight isn't going to do it. I'm in creative and therefore I'm unaffected by its uh, gravitational pull. So uh, that is one of the dangers of Thalmcraft. And now on to making some clothes. All right, here we are with uh, Thaumaturge's clothing. Now in your Thaumonomicon, you'll find under Artifice, Enchanted Fabric. Now I already clicked it and purchased this uh, research. But if you click it, it shows in here that you can actually make yourselves uh, some uh, weaker armor, but uh, it can be effective for other uses. Now just by getting some string and any color wool, plus many uh, one of each aspect in a wand, you can make a piece of enchanted fabric. Now you make enough of those, oops, let me go on to the next page, and you can make yourself a robe, leggings, and boots to match your goggles of revealing that we made on the previous episode. So let me show you here. Now if you notice it gives you a V discount of 2%. This uh, discount will affect your crafting. So 5.25. Now to give an example, this one here, the leggings, it's 5.25 and the boots is actually a different value. But we're going to go with, let's see, oops the robes first. We're going to take those out and we're going to put them on. So I now, from my goggles of revealing, getting a 5% plus this, a 2%, should be slightly less cost on this. You notice now it's not 5.25, it's 5.15. The reason is that this wand is typically 110% uh, V cost, but uh, it has reduced uh, costs due to the goggles and the uh, chest piece that we just put on. So let's actually make this, put that on as well, and this, and therefore with the complete set of Thaumaturge's clothing plus goggles of revealing, we now are incurring a regular 10% uh, discount on top of this 110% cost on the wand which we're going to be making a uh, new wand at the towards the end of this episode. But moving on to the next item, now you should be better equipped for uh, trying to save yourself costs on this because I know how uh, getting some of the aspects in your wand can be a bit tedious if you uh, make too many items too quickly. Alright, the basic information tab. Now I did a lot of unlocking and research on this, but if you go into the beginning one I recommend unlocking and researching everything on this page as your first project and it will get you very well into uh, Thumbcraft. So you start off with many of these already researched but uh, I recommend going with research expertise and research mastery is one of the first things that you do uh, because these will save you research points over time. So research expertise uh, essentially uh, you get a uh, 1 in 4 chance of regaining the research point if you accidentally place one or you put the wrong one or you just need it back uh, in the research table. Now I'm going to show you what that is in here. These points here. So if I am trying to combine this research for Nitor uh, to get 
one to the other and I put the wrong one for some reason in here Oops. and put it there oh it's a wasted point now you know it was eight now it's seven but if you click it there you go I actually got it back so that is uh, the benefit of it of that research alone now if you go into research mastery it's going to be even better there's a uh, 50% uh, chance you'll regain the research point, which I did uh, just recently, so now it's increased. And then uh, additionally there's a 10% chance that when you place an aspect it will uh, not cost any research when you place it. So if I were to put error here, there's a 1 in 10 chance that that would actually not cost me anything. It did that time, but it uh, is a possibility of saving you the uh, research points which are very important. You will need a lot of research points. Another reason I recommend you scan anything and everything you can as often as possible. Uh, but you're also able to combine aspects in the research table with this by shift clicking on the aspect. And uh, it also gives you a, a cheat sheet in a way of looking at stuff. For instance, if I hover over this wheat icon, Messis, you see that it has Herba and Humanus listed under it. Well, that's what's used to make it. So now if you see this icon here, Lux, and you want to know what it's made up of so that you can connect these easier, you don't have to any longer click out of your Thumbonomicon and go into the aspects list to try and, and find what these things are made up of. Instead, it gives you a shortcut of just hovering over it and it shows you Air and Ignis. Well, that makes things very simple. So by holding Shift and clicking on it, you can actually make more. Now if you watch Ignis here, it will go down and Lux will go up. There we go. And same thing with Air. It went down as well. It automatically takes the ingredients used and creates you another one. So you don't have to click one of each of these from going forward and then clicking this to make it. Instead you can just hover over it, shift click, and you're good to go. So if you're running low on something, you can continue to do that. If you run out of something, well then you can also end up making more of them through this manner here. All right, so what else do we get here? Research duplication. Sharing is caring. This is where when you make a research note, like this one here, research note, you can actually duplicate it with this manner. So by clicking this, you'll create a copy of the research as long as you're carrying paper and ink, which I often will carry that on my person just because I'm used to uh, multiple versions of Thomcraft where you might get uh, research notes popping up into your inventory. I haven't experienced that in this version, but I wouldn't doubt that it may be a possibility in the future as you're scanning things that might uh, come to pass. Plus, I need them quite frequently with this mod. Uh, what else is there on here? Well, you've got your deconstruction table, which is really, really handy. It's made with golden axe, golden pick, thermometer, and table, plus 20 per dicio in, uh, in your wand on the arcane workbench. And what this does, now let's see here, deconstruction table, is when you make it, you notice now the cost is only 20 instead of, uh, 20, instead of a higher percentage like 21 or 20.5 or anything place it down and it looks pretty fancy there it does use up a thermometer and that's why I recommend you end up using another or you uh, make a couple of them if not several because uh, you'll need two for your goggles one for the table one to scan things with and so on but this is it in its pure form when you use it you can actually put things in it and what will happen is it will destroy the item and possibly give you a research point in the table. Now it actually shows you what that research point is, but then you have to go inside and click it. And then it actually, if you see, it goes up to my corner there. It actually goes inside. Now you can leave a stack of these things in here and it will demonstrate what it is currently breaking down. It will destroy the items. So I don't recommend you put anything very valuable in there. A crafting table is usually the best because it will over time give you all of the primary aspects, which is all you ever need to make any of the research items in the table. So it's process that, you go in, you click it. You wait, it does the next one. You can actually sit here and just click a whole bunch of these. It's very slow, but it's a surefired way of getting as many research points as you want over time. So if you need them, 
you're desperate for getting research points, you just need one or two more because you ran out of something, this is a very simple, easy way of doing it so that you can get yourself up to snuff. All right, what else do we have in here? There was auras and, or excuse me, off of auras and nodes is advanced node tapping. And this is where you can, uh, well, earlier, let's see if I can actually show you. When I was looking at this, if you were to uh, drain from it the, uh, the uh, aspects, it would actually drain very slowly. And what that does is it allows you to drain it much quicker. Then you've got your master node tapping, which does it even faster than that. So this is like three times than fa uh, the normal, this is uh, two times than normal, and so on. Uh, node preserver. Now this one is very important. Uh, this allows you to essentially prevent from destroying nodes uh, by accident by draining them flat. So like I said earlier, if you are uh, using your wand and you drain a uh, aspect to zero, there's a chance that that aspect may not recharge anymore. So I recommend you leave some uh, points left in it. Well, with any other wand besides your iron capped wand, it will allow you to drain aspects down to one and it will keep it there. So this one here, as you saw in the previous episode, I uh, had some uh, aura nodes close by. I ended up putting a whole lot of them. And over time, this one ended up uh, absorbing the other nearby aura nodes and making one giant node filled with all sorts of crazy stuff in it that I can now use in my uh, wand should I need it. But the um, that node preserver is going to save your life many times because you're going to want to suck every last point out of those things as you're progressing on uh, except for the ones that would end up destroying it so as i said before we're going to actually get into making a new wand so that you don't end up destroying it with these primal uh, iron capped wooden wands anymore and of course node in a jar now i'm not going to do that this episode but because I need a much stronger wand in order to do it. Uh, but we will once we end up unlocking one. But what that allows you to do is encase a node in glass and uh, put a wood cap on it. Then it turns it into a uh, essentially a node in a jar. It'll look just like this and it allows you to tell or transport one wherever you'd like it to be. Now there is a chance that you may end up lessening the uh, node's power in doing so but those are the chances you got to take in order to make it so that it's uh, in a convenient spot for you. All right, and now on to Thaumaturgy and a new wand. All right, with Thaumaturgy, once you go to that tab, I have actually unlocked some of the research already on wand focus excavation, the wand foci, wand focus of equal trade, and as you saw earlier, I clicked and unlocked the focus pouch. Now I'm also going to click and undo the one focus of shock and one focus of frost. And now we have all this research done out here. And I also did uh, gold wand caps and a great wood wand core. And we are going to make ourselves a new, bigger and better wand. So, wand upgrade. Here we go. Things you'll need is going to be 10 gold nuggets. So that's going to be you know, a couple of gold bars broken down in this pattern. And you'll need some of the uh, aspects in your wand. And then you can make two gold caps. And at the same thing, you'll want two great wood logs to make yourself a great wood rod. And then just like in the first episode, you put the caps at either end of that stick, plus several more aspects on your wand, is going to get you an even better wand with a capacity of 50. Now, when I first get this, it's going to be empty. You notice in the top left corner there, everything's at zero. And by holding shift, by the way, allows you to see those numbers. But if I go out here, and you'll see there are so many numbers on this thing, it's ridiculous. But if I start draining the aspects, you'll start seeing them go down relatively quickly. And it, it kind of randomizes which ones go where. But for instance, look at Ignis. It's down at one. It's not going to drain any further because one, this is a gold capped wand and that works with your node preserver that you just obtained. Now the water, uh, air, terra, those are all going to just stay at one. And you can keep on trying to drain it and it's not going to drain any more out. So that is definitely a really big advantage for this so that you can in the future not destroy your aura nodes aspects. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is get a fresh wand that's already filled up, and we are going to try out some of the other items that we just unlocked. Let's get rid of this here. And that is the wand focus. Uh, it is the wand focus of fire, but it's just the one right, li right here listed as wand foci for meets function. And it essentially w is created in this manner, which I have here. Hold on. There we go. 10 and 20 are the standard cost. Uh, and you end up getting a wand focus of fire, which over time, as you use it, will use 0.1 ignis aspects per tick from your wand. So you notice this one has 50 of each one, and this will use 0.1 per second use. So it's kind of like uh, you're constantly doing a flamethrower effect. Now, on top of that, I also did wand focus of excavation, which is here. And that is done like so. Those are these are very cool and totally opposite uh, wand. Core, uh, excuse me, <laughs> having a, a problem at wand focus. There we go. So if I were to go out here and find myself a bad guy, yeah, it's the F key in this case. And if I choose the wand core or wand focus that I want, click on it, and you see it appears on the wand. I can go down here to the bad guys and then set them on fire. Now, they will burn over time, but they'll take even more damage if you end up continuing to shoot them. But you can see that the uh, my Ignis is actually going down right now as I'm using this. And, of course, I may end up, it may go back up from some of the, uh, the orbs that these guys drop, but that is just something to uh, to know. It, it's pretty cool. It won't set the landscape on fire, just uh, monsters and uh, and players. <laughs> so you're going to want to make sure that you're not hitting any of your friends if you uh, don't intend to. But the other way is pressing F, clicking here, I get the wand uh, focus of excavation. And this one uses Terra. And it will slowly dig leaving the blocks behind. So this is like a really quick pickaxe. And it uses the same value, I believe. It uses the, um, the 0.1 per tick to dig this. And it actually goes a quite a good distance. You can see here, I'm, a, I'm several blocks away, and it's digging quite, quite far out there. Now, there are other wand, co uh, wand focuses, and we're going to go back and take a quick look at those as well. Now what I've got here is a focus pouch. Now I've equipped it on my baubles slot on the belt. And essentially, if you want, you can right click it and put your wand foci inside. And what it will allow you to do is just by wearing it like so, you don't have to wear it here, you can wear it elsewhere. But this allows you, oh, <laughs> looks like Timmy found himself one of these guys. Uh, this allows you to end up changing out your wand focus on the go without you having to have an inventory full of wand foci. So let's try my favorite wand focus of shock. As you can see it's quite effective. Uh, it's kind of uh, just this chain lightning effect on uh, nearby monsters and bad entities. It, oh, I guess it does affect uh, friendlies as well if you aim at them, but it will uh, pretty much aim if you're close to them. You don't even have to be aiming directly at them. So you can see there, I was aiming a couple blocks off and it still zaps these guys. And it's quite effective actually. Uh, I found it to be uh, effective on most bosses as well. Uh, and also we have another one here. One focus of frost. Let's see if we can find any more bad guys before the sun comes up and burns them up too much. And you can see it throws an icy orb at the bad guy. That will bounce. Possibly do other damage. Now, it doesn't actually freeze water, as you might think it would. But, 
it does do damage in this case. Just in a different manner than many people are used to. Alright, and back to the base. And that about does it for this episode where we uh, covered the some more basics of Thomcraft. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, please give me a like, feel free to comment, or subscribe. And until next time, see ya.